All right, with Liberty Me, I'm Kyle Platt, here with Tony Stiles, host of The Tony Stiles Show, nationally syndicated libertarian radio show. Tony, it's great to finally have you on. Thank you. I appreciate being on. We uh, met up for the first time at ISFLC in Washington, D.C., and uh, it was really fun. Uh, it was great to talk to you there. And uh, the thing is that, that I find interesting is that you keep getting into, uh, you, ugh, bet, bet, bet. you keep getting into trouble. Or maybe it's yeah. not your fault, but uh, recently your Facebook account was banned or disappeared somehow. And uh, I guess it's back now, is that correct? That's correct. It just came back yesterday, sometime in the middle of the day. It was just by surprise we were working on it. It was kind of a battle. We had uh, a lot of things going on with that. The details uh, as to why uh, may eventually come out, but uh, we have strict advice by our legal team not to say anything or do anything with that. Nothing bad happened. We didn't do anything wrong. Somebody else posted to our page something that shouldn't have been posted, which caused it to be banned. It was something uh, very controversial and very time sensitive to that particular day. So we had to, uh, we had to be banned, I guess, in order for them to correct it and I guess assess our page a little bit as to what we are about. So it was a little nerve wracking because I don't know. For me, I'm I'm a businessman. I have a radio show. I do political talk radio. I'm I'm controversial on the air. My personal life, not really all that much. I'm more of a more of a loud mouth when it comes to politics and everything else. I'm pretty pretty modest and, and lead a pretty modest life. But uh, within those circles, I guess it's becoming more and more known that uh, I have. Uh, I'm, I guess my reputation precedes me in places that I go. And that does not exclude the internet. Sure, sure. You know, I, I kind of assumed that that was the situation, and I bet you did as well. Um, because, you know, I peruse your site. It's not one of those places that's going to, I mean, obviously you're talking about libertarian things. You're talking about things that are kind of on the cutting edge of philosophy and politics. But it's not, you know, anything dangerous, really. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> it's really dangerous to talk about peaceful resolution and, and uh and being angry with with the government and calling them calling them un, unwanted masters i don't see anything wrong with that the government sees things wrong with that and sure. people within facebook and people that have that mentality that have been spoon-fed the lies they may have that mentality too and you know for every if this is true this is 100 percent true on, on every like that i that i get i guess you could say let me put it like this for every let me do the math in my head quick because we have on our facebook we can see how many people have complained about each post and on average it's about one for every five likes are people complaining sure so yeah so i don't know i don't see anything wrong with what we're posting it may be like you said a little on the on the edge uh, of of the philosophy of politics but i don't think it's i don't think it's pushing the envelope by any stretch of the imagination did it, did it make you feel a little paranoid though especially since fairly recently you got stopped and uh detained in texas was it yeah uh, just outside el paso texas yeah yeah there's been there's been quite a few things that that whole deal in texas was was very nerve-wracking and there's reasons behind that we have uh we have a whistleblower that's coming out in uh in july that has some very good information about uh, about some some irs profiling that's going on we can't release it until then because the government hasn't made their move to make it be known so if we were to release it right now people would say what the hell are they talking about we have no idea what this is we have to wait until the government makes their move and makes it known as to what they're doing so we can go ahead and blow the lid off of it right away so i think a lot of what we have going on with the ordeals down in uh down in texas that we had and having our tour manager down in tampa getting getting messed with down there something interesting about that down in tampa i guess i should timeline this a little better sure. let me stop for a moment. Uh, for those that don't know, going from, I'm on a national tour, I'm doing speaking around the country, going to different places, getting ready to go on my next leg. We're going to Philadelphia and Boston, up to Pork Fest and uh, down to DC. We're going a lot of places again. But uh, on our way through this first leg of our tour, we're on our way from California. When I say we, my, my car, uh, I was in California. My tour manager and my producer were going to Tampa, driving to Tampa, where I was going to fly out and meet them. They got pulled over in Tampa, 
I'm not Tampa, pardon me. They got pulled over in El Paso, Texas. And uh, I guess the people, the, what I can assume is that the, uh, the, the, sta the city police that were there in El Paso were told to, to take the car in. They said that it was stolen, which isn't true. I'd have to report it stolen. So what happened was they called me and I had to come down to El Paso, Texas in the middle of the night, pick up the car, uh, let them know that it's my car. About half an hour later, we get picked up by the Department of Homeland Security and get detained and our car is ripped apart. Uh, the whole thing's been neutralized now. They said they found marijuana in the car, which is a lie, and we pointed that out very well, and they dropped everything. So the whole charges on everything have been completely dropped because they were unable to produce anything realistic. When they told us they had marijuana in the car, they were unable to produce any marijuana to us. So that was really nice one. So they kept us for seven hours on trumped up charges that didn't exist. We go on our way. I think they were really trying to detain us. They really must have thought that we had something, being the, the crazy liberty-minded people we are. They must have thought we had guns or, you know, drugs or whatever it may be. Of course. Be, but, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Something to confiscate. All, yeah, something to confiscate. Exactly. They, they thought they were going to get me on something. And Texas is the perfect place to do that because they're a zero-tolerant state. But, you know, I, I, don't ha I don't smoke marijuana. I don't, I don't own a gun. And I don't have anything against smoking marijuana. I hope that it's decriminalized. I have nothing against guns. They're great, but I think it's very, I think it's a very good thing for there to be advocates out there like me that don't own guns, that don't smoke marijuana, that are advocating for the legalization of marijuana. Completely agree. People. Yeah. Of it rather, and uh, and also for for gun rights. I think it's important for people to be like that. But that's that's beside the point. I'm getting off track <laughs> again. Cut. But what happened, in, what happened was we go ahead and we isolate our phones so they can't track us or anything. We get down to Tampa. We wake up in the morning. Uh, our tour manager is somewhere else at the time. Um, Nate and I, my producer, we are doing, I don't know, whatever we do in the morning. We're just out doing things. Just, I don't know, probably having breakfast or maybe sleeping. And I have no idea what we're doing at the time. But what happens at that, at, at that specific point is... Uh, where our tour manager was, Eric, he hears a banging on the door and it's police. They haul him out and they put him in the back of a wagon for about seven hours before they book him. We have no idea where this guy is. We're worried. We have no idea. We've lost a guy. Don't know where he is. Can't find him. Uh, but come to find out, they, well, they held him for like four days is what they did. And uh, they were really hoping that I would show up and post the bail, but we had other people do that. Um, yeah, anyways. Long story short, what we found out about that that department, that that specific uh, county near Tampa, is that their their sheriff there used to be on Barack Obama's uh, service detail huh. as a in the Secret Service. So there's there's some forces that are definitely trying to tear apart people in the, in the liberty movement. I hate that term, liberty movement. I don't I don't care for that term. I like the liberty community. I don't know what a great term would be, but that. Uh, Everybody that's that's involved with liberty, all my all my brothers and sisters, it seems to be that there are forces out there that are definitely trying to tear it apart uh, from the outside and the inside. And if I can get my finger on on where exactly it's it's at, I'd love to know. Especially right now, with uh, with the shooting out in Nevada and Alex Jones taking fire and Adam Kokesh taking fire on on some of the stuff that's going on out there. You know, yeah, it, it gonna, seems, uh, seems was, like a hit. Yeah, I, I was definitely going to bring that up. And, you know, I, I do think that there is extra scrutiny on libertarian-minded individuals. Uh, I hate the word or the phrase liberty movement as well, but I can't think of a better one. So that's kind of a frustrating conundrum. Um, but, you know, you look at what happens whenever you've got individuals out there who shoot a couple policemen, put Gadsden flags on one of them. Uh, and now you've got salon articles coming out saying, you know, this is what libertarians are. You know, it's, it, it was expected, unfortunately. I knew it was going to happen. But, uh, you know, I look at your situation and I think, yes, absolutely, I think libertarians are targeted more. But it's also something that people should take from your situation that this is what happens to average individuals. And perhaps they don't think about yeah. it the right way. Like, we're constantly getting messed with, and we're constantly being poked and prodded and by, by police and by, uh, by government authorities, and most people just kind of take it in stride. 
but they should be furious about it. I don't know. That that's two points. We should we should deal with the Las Vegas stuff though. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very valid point. There's a lot of a lot of in individuals out there that just don't know don't know what their rights are. Like for me, for example, if you would have asked me five years ago what to do when I get pulled over, I would have said just comply. That's <laughs> that's what you do. You do what they tell you to because they're the authority. And you know, I've I've of course gone a long way since then. Now I knew at that that point when we had the DHS surrounding us, I was asleep in the back seat. I woke up to getting swatted at in the back seat by by the tour manager uh, and waking up to lights around us and him saying we have trouble. Uh, my first thought then, much different than five years ago, my first thought then was I need to pull out my camera. Right. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we need to uh, we need to document this stuff. I think that was uh, that was one of the things about Las Vegas is that Las Vegas cops refuse to uh, refuse to have cameras on their vehicles, like a lot of cops around the United States. But you know, it's it's kind of an uneasy thing right now talking about the Las Vegas situation in the libertarian community. Um, yeah. Personally, I you know I don't I don't think that you can justify shooting cops who are just eating lunch. Eating that, lunch, I know. Yeah, exactly. that, that's, that's, that's not justifiable. That's not libertarian. Yeah, no, it's not at all. So it's, you have to strike that perfect balance, I guess, which is difficult. You have to understand the problem that cops pose and the fact that if anyone reads Radley Balco, which they should, cops do see civilians as the enemy right now. But... Oh, yeah. You can't, oh, you can't do that, you know, and, and these people, I, you know, they're not libertarians. They weren't. No, they're not true libertarians. They may be, this is what's dangerous about what's out there. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, and, you know, I won't, I won't name names, and, and there, some of them are very good friends of mine. Some of them are just, you know, simple acquaintances of mine, and I don't disagree or agree with anybody. I try to stay as neutral as possible. I like a debate here and there when it's needed. But here's what's dangerous about what what went on. If they want to be, if they want to label those people as libertarians or as anarchists, anarcho-capitalists, whatever they want to, whatever label they want to put on these people, uh, libertarian being the easiest, rec most recognizable way to to put it, these people maybe they were right at that edge of of understanding what libertarian is, but maybe they got a hold of some material that they didn't quite understand just yet, that they weren't quite ready for. A lot like, I don't know, for me, and I get into a lot of trouble over this, for me, I'm I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ, but there's a lot of people that first get into Christianity, and they take their Bible, and they're like, ah, and they thump it on everybody, and they just don't quite understand what it's all about quite yet, and they should just shut up. They should be quiet until they understand things, and let the people that do understand things take care of things for a little bit. Maybe... Just like that, within the liberty movement, there's that phrase again, within the liberty movement, maybe there are some people that just came along, these people, and thought, okay, I do believe in this libertarian mentality, and got a hold of some material they weren't quite ready to digest yet, and took the wrong way, and went a strange way, and went, went the wrong direction with it. Sure, sure, and you know... But then again, maybe we, it's a setup, too. Yeah, that's true. But when something like this happens... It's not going to decrease the state. It's not going to decrease the amount of policemen. It's not going to decrease the amount of police force. If anything, what happens is you get a public who, up until now, I think, had been less sympathetic of cops as of late. And now, all of a sudden, when something like this happens, there's going to be a huge outpouring of support for cops. There's going to be a lot more police on the streets. And it just... it's. It's immoral, number one, but it's it's so counterproductive from a strategic standpoint. If we really want to like decrease the amount of cops and decrease the amount of of of, um, of force applied by cops, you know, you can't do something like this. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, it's it's counterproductive, one hundred percent. You know, like you said, it's just it's cops sitting there eating lunch. If there were cops on my property, I don't own a gun. If they had guns drawn on me, I'd, you know, I don't know what exactly I do. That's my fault for not owning guns. That's my problem that I have. But there's a lot of people out there that say if cops come onto your property and they have their guns drawn, 
shoot like they're the enemy. What do you think of that? I'm sorry, I turned into a host all of a sudden. I just realized that. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's kind of the conundrum that we face. In fact, you know, I really, I want to have you on at, at multiple times in the future and we can just, you know, shoot the shit back and forth because that yeah. would be fairly uh, entertaining. But yeah, you know, I, the issue there is that it's, it's very simple. I, I think that the libertarian position, and I'm not here to tell people what they should believe, but I think the libertarian position is that you can apply force in self-defense. And if, if somebody feels, and this is a legal thing, right? It, it, it reminds me of the Trayvon Martin, um, uh, George Zimmerman thing. You know, can you tell somebody or can you see if somebody really did feel like their life was threatened in that situation? Well, I mean, if someone feels that their life is truly threatened, I think they have the right to, the, to defend themselves in that manner. So let me ask you this then. If there's police that show up, let's use the same analogy again. Police show up on your property with guns drawn. At what point does it become self-defense? The moment their guns are drawn or the moment that somebody starts shooting? Because with self-defense, as far as legal go legal terminology goes, somebody else has to start something. Right, like, sure. They would have to just charge a weapon before you could say it's self-defense. Right. Well, you know, and this is this is where things get very tricky as far as, as um, the legal system goes, in that you got to understand that you're facing a jury of your peers, and that jury of your peers, for the most part, probably support police officers. Oh yeah. I mean, you're you're not you're not. You have to think about these things before you take action. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult one because for me, I know I immediately would feel threatened. I feel threatened in the presence of, of police officers. There's never been been one single time where I saw the police and thought, "Oh, thank God, the police are here." I, I now feel protected. That's never been the way I felt. It's always been, "Oh, the police are here," you know. And you know, I don't have to be doing anything wrong. You know, most most of the time, 99.999% of the time, I'm not doing anything that's that's thought of as wrong. The other percentage of the time is what society would see as wrong, and that's a very small percentage. But what I'm getting at is that if I'm not doing anything wrong, and they're coming up to me, and not necessarily coming up to me, but they're, I'm in the presence of a police officer, and I feel threatened. If their gun is out or not, whether they're looking at me or not, uh, doesn't, shouldn't... It, at what point do I do I start to do I start to think that how do I want to phrase this? At what point do I become a victim? The moment that I feel threatened, because if you want to go from uh, from a standpoint of a lot of uh, a lot of feminists or you know just women in general, I guess would be would be better. A lot of them just in the presence of of uh, of any person that they've had a bad encounter with. If they're in the presence of that person, they feel threatened, right? So a lot like that, I've had bad encounters with police, and I've seen other people have bad encounters with police. I feel threatened at that point immediately when they're present. So, you know, maybe maybe I should, uh, I don't know. I guess I, I guess the point, I guess I don't have a point. I guess I don't know where I'm going with this. I, I'm just thinking as, as far into this as I possibly can, trying to, Trying to dissect the whole thing is, is what I'm doing. Well, and you're going down the rabbit hole of, of the legal system there, which yeah, is re really I tough. Turning point. There's no there's no point where I can discern at what point do I decide that I'm threatened and should defend myself, or the point that I just feel threatened and do nothing. Sure. But when you feel threatened, the first natural instinct is to do something about it. And the police are the people you go to if you have somebody that's bothering you. Right. I think the right. overarching point, or at least the one that I come I come away with there. Sorry, what? I said it shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be the police or the first people that, that you think of to go to, but... That's what, I mean, that's what I mean, though. That's the overarching point that I come away with, is how sad is it that this job, these people in this profession that was invented to protect people are the first thing that you think of when you think of fear, you know? I don't... You're right. You're right. I've, I've never felt better when cops are around, even if I'm not doing anything wrong, because I know that they have impunity. I know that they can throw me in prison. I know that they can do all sorts of things to me and nothing will happen. And I mean, if, if anyone comes away from this conversation with anything, it should be an understanding if you didn't already understand that there's something seriously wrong there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's true, that impunity point. They can do anything that they want to. And it's, is it our fault? That's another good question to put, to put out there for people. Is it our fault that they're in that position? 
a lot would argue, yeah, it is. We should have gotten out. We should have voted for the, for them to have less, for them to, we should have voted for people that, that would have uh, limited their authority, that would have limited other authority, that would have limited any authority, but we haven't. We failed as a society to do that. But then there's the other side of it that says, you know, what, what makes up a society? The government or the people? Sure. So there's... <laughs> yeah, and that's, then you have to define government. Tony, I know you have to go. I know you're a busy guy. You're on tour right yeah. now. Um, yeah. I really appreciate you stopping by and talking to me for a little bit. Let's continue this, please. Let's go yeah. ahead and just uh, you know have multiple talks in the future and just kind of go back and forth and discuss these issues. And hopefully uh, through our consternation and just kind of uh, mental gymnastics, uh, somebody watching might come away with something interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And just for everybody that's out there that's that's watching this before June 16th, which is Monday, June 16th, you should watch Mike Salvi's World. We're doing it on location in Philly. I'll be there in person. It should be interesting. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, have a good one, Tony. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your tour. And like I said, let's uh, let's talk again soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Anytime. All right. <laughs>